So recently I was setting up a local environment on a Mac for a PHP project using XAMPP and I was running into confliction problems with the, or just issues with the XAMPP PHP and the local PHP and Apache that are on Mac. So what I ended up doing was I looked around at some different options and tried out Doxel with Docker and that, that pretty much solved my problem. I'm starting to use it more in my workflow and getting better at it and having it become more my main go-to local environment rather than using XAMPP, especially on the Mac just because it does have PHP and Apache installed natively, so common to run into confliction issues there. Not so much on the, the PC, but definitely on the Mac. So Doxel is a is like an add-on to Docker, which is nice because it allows you to utilize all the efficiencies of Docker without having to have that overhead of managing the software so much. And you can get up and running with a project. And what it does is it creates the volumes, it brings in the volumes for like for WordPress or any of the other bigger PHP frameworks and also creates the container for you in Docker. It also has a quick start boilerplate pre-configurations for the major frameworks and that worked out good for Drupal and Laravel but I did run into issues where I, it was buggy for WordPress. So for this tutorial and this post that I created how to install WordPress with Doxel, I'm going to do just a standard installation where we do a fin init which is the standard and alias for Doxel is fin and then we'll manually install WordPress by downloading it and putting it in the Docker folder and configuring it. So yeah, I'm just going to go down this blog post in just a few quick steps and we can be up and running with WordPress locally using Doxel and, and Docker. First thing we need to do is get Docker installed and I'm using Docker Desktop, which is what this tutorial is, is using. Um, so you'll go to Docker Desktop and choose your machine and install it there like you would any other software. And we have to have Docker up and running and ready for us. So I have Docker running right now, open it up. As you can see, I have just a ready to go set up with Docker. So we can move to the next step, which is installing Doxel. And Doxel has great documentation. If you click through to the setup here, install Doxel, scroll down, choose your machine, and we'll do a command line install for uh, Doxel. I'm not gonna use the virtual box. I'm gonna scroll down here to where it says Mac OS with Docker desktop. And you can also install Docker right from here if you need to. To install Doxel, you just need to copy this bash command and open a terminal and install it from the command line. So I'll just open a new tab here and paste it in. I'm not going to run it. I've already ran it and installed Doxel on my machine. So you'll just open a terminal and, and just run this and, and go through the, the prompts and you'll have Doxel installed on your machine. Then once you have it installed, you're ready to configure it and run a fin init. So you'll go to the next uh, drop down here, launch a project, and you'll create a working folder, create your project folder, and then we'll just do a fin init to launch the, the Doxel stack. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I have a working folder here called WordPress. There's nothing in it right now. So I'll do a right click down to open a new terminal there, run fin init. And it's going to ask me if I want to run it in that folder. I'll say yes. And it's going to ask me if it can use the doc root folder to make its root folder. And I'll say yes. And it'll start the configuration process where it's bringing in the volumes for everything here. It's it's basically taking the name of the folder and, and creating everything uh, in the containers based on the name of the folder here for the volumes. And that's the same name it's going to use for its local domain. So it's saying wordpress.doxel.site and we'll just jump over to Docker to see what it did there. Open up the dashboard and we can see there's that project container with the volumes there's the Apache, CLI, and the, the MariaDB right there. So everything's running in that container, which is great. And now we can go to the URL, I'll open in a link, and here we can see it's running a test PHP file. If we go to the folders, we'll see the doc root folder here, and then there's also a, a .doxel file that's hidden. So we'll go into the doc root folder where it's 
This is our root folder for our projects, and there's that index.php file, that test index.php file. So we're ready to install WordPress. I'll scroll down here to step four and go to wordpress.org and download the latest version. I have it open right here where I've downloaded it right there unzipped it and now I can grab these files copy them over to the root folder I'm going to get rid of that test file PHP file paste in my WordPress files and now we can go back to the local host and we're ready to start installing WordPress so continue and we'll get our name for our database and pass username, password, and database host here. To do that, there's a couple options. You can, if you scroll down in the docs, will set up the instructions here. You'll see there's a, a PHP file you could just drop into. You could just name this whatever and, and go to it in the browser and it'll spit out the information you need. But a uh, easier way I found to do that without having to put a file in there is just run config show in the command line here and that's going to give us all of our uh, configuration settings. So if we scroll up to right here we have our database name is default, our host is db, our, user, our password is user, and our user is user. And so that's our configuration settings right there. So now we can put those here. So we have default user, user, and db. And there we go. We're installing WordPress on the database right now. Creating our config. Just put in admin for test purposes here. Setting my login information and install. And we'll log in. And there we go. We have our new version of WordPress here. And we can go to the home page and we're up and running. So if we go back to our files where we were in that doc root folder, we can see we have our theme files right there we can work on. And yeah, everything everything is up and running. It gives us a quick, simple environment to to get a project up and running and a scalable one at that. Another couple of things I wanted to show quick is so if we're going to stop the project, like you would turn off the local server and we run fin, the command for that, and I, if you run fin help, I'm sure it's here. We do a find and look for stop. But uh, if you run fin help, this is going to give you all the all the commands. I got it off their website, and I'm sure it's here, but without having to sort of find it. Fin stop is how you stop the server, and that's going to shut everything down. So if we go back over to Docker, we'll see that that project is not running now. So one of the I don't know if it's an issue or sort of a workaround, but now that if we if we run fin start, which is how to start the server, we're gonna get an error. And it's pretty much just a configuration, like because Docker was already running and then we start and stop that Doxel project, I guess just the sequence of things, it's going it's going to give us a, a 502. And I'm not really 100% how to fix that, but the workaround is, is easy enough. All we have to do is shut down. We have to just shut down Docker and go through the sequence of starting everything up from starting docker then starting doxel so i'm going to stop doxel there so everything's turned off and now i'm going to restart docker and typically i'm working on projects i'm not really shutting down and starting up like i would say a xamp or a node project so it's not really that big of a deal i was having a little bit of a, a trick finding out why why this was and then realized i just needed to shut down doxel shut down docker restart docker and then restart Doxel. So here we're at an unstarted project here. It's not running it, but it's waiting for us. So now we can just come back to the command line, fin start, restart everything. And for me, this, this works just fine. And if I do find out how to patch that or fix that, I'll definitely make a video on it. But now if we go to our local environment here, 
we're back up and running. And the last thing I want to cover is how to delete these files. So pretty straightforward, but I want to go over it quick because there is a, a couple little things. So we'll do fin stop. And then now that that's stopped, we'll go into our container and we'll delete all the volumes for that project. Easy enough there. And then we'll just go to the files and delete the files. One other little trick is that you do have to expose that hidden doxel file and then we can trash that. If we don't remove that file and we start up another project here, doxel is going to get confused because it sees that uh, configuration file. So just uh, move that to the trash and there we go. We're starting from an empty slate again. It's another nice thing about this process is we can easily organize and manage these projects, these local projects, without having files and, and software sort of scattered out everywhere. So I think that's about it. That's uh, all I wanted to cover, kind of walk through and, and show the details of how I laid that out in the post and on a video form so that I wasn't missing anything. But yeah, that's how to set up a local WordPress environment with Doxel and Docker.